All right, Doctor, I kind of have like a case for God here. <laughs> this is a fun discussion, right? I mean, I don't know. I think it's great to talk about it, you know? I think it's pushed too deep down in a way these days, you know? Like, I don't think anybody's going to convince anybody of it, right? Like, it's such a personal experience, right? I, I just think that it's too personal, you know? And forcing beliefs on other people doesn't really work, right? Uh, people have to have that experience, that you know, that one thing or a bunch of things or... You know, as a nurse, I see a lot of people at the end, and man, by that time, they're ready to go, you know? They're like almost a hundred years old, and they're just ready to leave this earth, right? Well, for me, um, happened when I was eight. I think it was eight. Yeah, yeah, I was eight. Gosh, it's like 1993. 92, 93, one of those years. My family liked to travel a lot. My mom and my stepdad. And they'd take... I think there was one little... No, I just... I don't think there were any of my younger brothers yet. But we went across country a lot. And this particular session, we went over to um, Washington, Washington D.C. And there was a lot of people there for the 4th of July, right? Independence Day. Crazy amount of people in that, like, middle area in front of the in front of the Capitol building, right? With all the museums around there, you know? You know what I'm talking about? Well, we went through them all, um, and, uh, you know, there was a cool one with a mammoth, and there was a bunch of other cool ones, um, you know, natural science. Gosh, I can't even remember all the names of them. But we went around, looked around, tons of people in the middle part, right? And uh, we wanted to go, me and my brothers wanted to go on our own. I think my grandma was there too. But um, they had told us where to meet, a spot to meet up at, a, you know, a certain time. And, you know, being ADHD, of course, I didn't pay attention to hear that. I was just thinking to myself, I'll just stay with my brothers and everything will be good. Well, I, uh, you know, we walked about mm, four or five blocks west on the south side of the lawn, I think, uh, to like a Disney store or something like that. We were walking around there. Uh, my brothers just, man, they hated me or something, but they, they just, either they told me they were going somewhere, I wasn't paying attention, but I was looking at stuff. The next thing I know, I was all by myself. And I waited and waited and waited and they didn't come back. Um, I started to get worried, so I walked out and walked back to the main place, uh, to start looking for them. I was in the main lawn. I had no idea where we were going to meet. I was just looking for my brothers. I, oh gosh, it must have been two in the afternoon. I remember, um, you know, after a while I started feeling like... I was alone, obviously, and I wasn't finding anybody in, anytime soon, so I, I knew I was kind of lost. Um, there was a little bit of excitement in that. I kind of had a little bit of fun. I wasn't too urgent in the search. Um, I walked around to the different museums again, and like the Aeronautical Museum, and I just walked and saw like the... Um, you know, the aquarium. I don't know if there was an aquarium, but I think there was some fish in one of them. And, you know, it was actually pretty fun for a while. Um, we didn't have cell phones at this time and day, right? Uh, but after about four hours of doing that, five hours of doing that, I started to get worried, right? <laughs> of course. I wasn't bumping into my family, and there was probably, I don't know, it felt like, a couple hundred thousand people just everywhere. And I remember getting really nervous and feeling really dumb for losing, you know, getting lost. <laughs> I remember starting to pray a lot. I prayed probably for about three hours, right? Like, you know, just please, God, help me find my family, help me find my family. And it started getting dark. 
It's trying to get around nine o'clock, right? The sun was setting, ran back and forth through all those crowds of people in the middle lawn there. There were tents set up everywhere. It was getting dark. I was freaking out. I had my little 90s fanny pack all ready to go, but didn't have a lot of money. I, I was going back and forth with the idea of calling the police or, you know, talking, finding a policeman and telling him I was lost. And I, I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> I just, I don't know if I was too nervous to talk to somebody or what. But I remember sitting on a bench. And I remember I was on the east side, south part. There's a little, there was a little thing that went in. And there was like a, just a place to be alone, sitting on a bench. And I just started crying. And I was seven, eight-year-old kid just bawling my eyes out. I just said, God, where, where's my family? You know? And, um, a second later, uh, there was a picture of that, that big giant boned mammoth just popped right into my head probably been by there three times already. I've been through all of the museums, I think, three times. That mammoth museum was on the west side of the lawn, kind of the northwest side. I remember getting up right after that, walking straight, straight to that building. I walked in and my, my mother standing right in front of it crying seven hours being lost in Washington DC with a million people <laughs> millions of people I remember walking up to her and telling her what's wrong mom <laughs> she started freaking out on me but I remember that story and I told that through my life before but I use that um, it's kind of my basis when I felt like God did listen to me. Um, it took a while, you know. I spent pleading with God for three hours before that, and he didn't say a peep. But it, it came when I broke down, and I felt like there was nothing left, and there was no way I was getting home to my mom, and I asked one last time. And that image popped in my mind. It was... Very sweet, sweet memory. One that I remember when I feel lost and alone. That somebody's out there looking after you, you know? Like, we're here to learn, right? We're here to feel lonely and feel like all is lost. And things happen when we call out in the dark on a lonely bench sometimes. It helps pick us up, makes us go a little further. Maybe turns us... In the right direction. Yeah. I don't know. I'll never forget that story. It's uh, burned into my mind forever. So. I don't know. I just think that that's a powerful. Powerful experience. And example of how it's just such a personal experience. I mean who else would believe that right? Unless they go through it themselves. Who else would believe that God is real. Unless they had something like that. You know, you can talk about other things in scripture all day long or whatever you want to do, but really it comes down to having that personal experience. For me, that was it. It's helped me get through a lot of my many issues in my life. So, all right, there's that one. <laughs> Thanks, doctor. <laughs>